Welcome guys to a new video and this video is going to start a video series on my home lab so I'm going to be creating a home lab um, using Proxmox and this is because I found an old computer that I had um, which is a Dell Optiplex 9020 SFF and I decided just to load uh, Proxmox on it and just do a small lab so in this lab, I'm going to be showing you guys first. The first videos are going to be how to set up the firewall. After that, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can basically deal with having a dynamic IP address, meaning an IP address that changes from time to time because you have a home internet provider, right? Like Comcast, Verizon, or whatever. You don't have a static public IP. You have a dynamic public IP address. So I'm going to show you guys how you can deal with that and it's going to be really cool so we're going to talk about pfsense firewalls docker containers um a proxy and a lot of cool stuff that we can do so stay tuned and like i said before i'm going to be using a dell optiplex 9020 you can find one for 50 dollars then you can buy ram for like 20 more dollars so for my ram i have 16. i wish i could add 32 but that's what i have right now and i have like 600 gigabytes of um, disk space right now so that's what we're going to be playing with I have something like this it's not it has all it doesn't look that beat up but um, that's what I have a 9020 Dell Optiplex 9020 and it is the i5 version um, CPU version and you can get one for 50 bucks and just follow me on everything I'm going to be doing um, without further ado let's go ahead and go to Proxmox, you can go ahead and install Proxmox. It's really easy to install. You can find a bunch of videos on YouTube. I already have it installed, so there we go. Um, I also already uploaded my images, so if you want to download PFSense, you can go ahead to the PFSense website. I'm going to leave a link on the description below. I already downloaded it and uploaded it to Proxmox. All you have to do is, after you install Proxmox, you want to go to your um, to your local Proxmox disk right here. You want to go to ISO images and you want to go ahead and upload it and select it from your machine. All right. So after you do that, it's going to upload it. You can see over here, I have a couple images, Ubuntu, PFSense, Parrot, Security, and I also have a Windows Server image in here just so I can play around on this lab. All right. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is you can either right click over here to create a new VM that's what we're going to be do. We are going to call this PF. Um, why isn't my keyboard working? Oh, no, never mind. I can. <laughs> the name goes over here. There we go. PF. PF sense. That's what we're going to call it. Go ahead and do next. Over here for the storage, it's basically going to keep it on the local. Um, available capacity. So we're probably going to have to, yep, that's fine. We can just do it from here. Yeah, because we need to select the image from the ISO that we uploaded. This, there we go. So that's what the one we're going to use. Linux, that's fine. We can go to system over here. The graphics, you can leave everything as default. Should be good. Next, we are looking at the disk. Um, so let's just go ahead and add like 64 just double it for the disk space You never know CPU CPU right here should be good um, Memory I want to Do just do like a run four that should be good Next uh, Network we're not going to have any network devices. We can do that later on We can go ahead and go next confirm everything you have set up. Let's go ahead and do finish that's going to create a firewall or a VM, not a firewall. We need to do that now. So here we go. So we have the PFSense um, ready to go. So what we need to do now is that we can go ahead and go into um, PFSense. We can go options. Oh, good. We can go to snapshots you, you can see everything you can do from here console hardware this is what you want to do and from here what you want to do is you want to add a network device and on the network device you want to add the vbr1 and we don't want to do any no vlan and anything like that so this one is going to be my um this one is going to be 
my WAN, right? What is coming after my modem, after my Comcast modem, is going to be this one right here. This is a VMBR0, right? And for this one, it's going to be an Intel E1000. So that should be good. So this one, VMBR0, is going to be my WAN. Let's go ahead and add that. And I just noticed that I only have um, I only have one interface, so I need to go into Proxmox, go ahead and go to Network, and you want to add a new one. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We can just call it, um, let's call it Bridge, VMBR1. And from over here, um, if you want to create, um, you know, if you want it to be whatever, um, IP address you want, you can go ahead and do that. I am not going to do that. I'm going to let the firewall do the do DHCP and all that cool stuff. So there we go. VMBR1. So now we go ahead and go back to PFSense. We are going to add that. Uh, we are going to add that network device. We are going to add now one. And one is going to be our um, VM. VR1 is going to be our lane, so where all the devices are going to be connected. All right, so basically behind our firewall. So now let's go ahead and start this guy. So we are running, there was an error on the start. Failed, did it not start? What is the error? Exited with code one. VM, what? Okay, so it is saying that my network interface is not was not created. Yes, it was. Let's go ahead and start this again. See what other error we got. We got the same error, and that is because it's saying it wasn't created. Um, I believe that's because it's saying it's not active. So let's go ahead and auto start. Let's go ahead and go to advanced. Actually, let's just go ahead and create a 192.168.10.0 slash 24. Default gateway 192.10.1 slash 24. Oop, they don't let you do that. Okay. And we're not going to do IPv6. Auto star. Okay. Uh, the default already exists on interface VR1.10. Oh, yeah, we don't need a. We're just going to keep the. Because the default gateway is going to be for the WAN. So for this one, we are just going to keep it like this. Uh, 182.168.10.0 uh, slash 24. There we go. That should make it apply configuration. I guess I forgot. I forgot to do that. That's what it was. You can go ahead and apply the configuration. Um, here is the network, what we're going to work with. And what we could do is we can go ahead and go to PFSense over here um, the interface is already there and now if we start the pfsense it should start with no issues there we go because i forgot whenever i created the network interface i forgot to apply the configurations make sure that you do that guys so let's go ahead and launch the console on the top right of course it launched on my other window we can go ahead and finish from over here so as you can see guys it is loading so now we are going to go ahead and install pfsense let's go ahead and wait for this to load all right so we are to the next prompt so we are going to accept the policies right uh, we are going to just install pfsense press ok over here we are going to continue with the default key map that's good we're going to do auto zfs guided root on zfs okay uh, we are going to proceed with installation press ok um, for this one, Stripe, no redundancy is good, and we are going to so we are going to you're going to press the space bar and press OK, right? Um, of course, yeah, it's going to destroy, right? We don't have anything in there, so on the disk. So let's go ahead and say yes, and now it's going to go ahead and finish the installation. So let's go ahead and wait for that. Now it is asking me if I want to do any final manual modifications. I'm just going to press no. I don't need to do anything else. Uh, so press no and we are going to reboot the firewall and now after reboot after a reboot it is going to show me 
um, you know, it's going to come up and it's going to be live. So let's go ahead and wait for that. Okay, so now it is asking me if I want to set up any VLANs. I'm going to press N and then enter. I don't want any VLANs. Enter the WAN interface or A for auto detection. So let's go ahead and the WAN interface, it is going to be, um, where is it? I think I cannot see it from here. So it's going to be EM0, EM0. Uh, so enter the LAN interface name or A for auto detection for the LAN. Um, for the LAN, it's going to be VTNet right here. VTNet0. Enter. There we go. So we have EM, EM0. And for the LAN, it's VTN, VTNet0. Do you want to proceed? Let's press Y, enter. Okay, so now it's going to be configuring. We can see that the EM, EM0 link state is down. Um, and if you get this wrong, um, you can always revert this and I can show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and wait for the firewall to finish up. Okay, guys, so now the firewall is up and running. You can see that we have the WAN. We set it up correctly because you can see that it got an IP address from my, right, from my router for that Comcast router that I have. Right for my LAN, um, but this is going to be my WAN because we want to go out that way. And then we have the LAN over here. It didn't get any IP address, but we want to set it up to be 192.168.10.0/24. So to do that, we can go ahead and set interfaces IP address. Right, we can go over here, number two. So let's select option number two, and it's going to ask us to enter the number of the interface you wish to configure. I want to configure the LAN, so it's two. Okay, now we want to enter the new LAN IPv4 address. 192.168.10.1 is going to be the firewall LAN interface, right? And then it's going to ask us um, the subnet mask um, that we want to select. Like I said, it's going to be slash 24. So um, 255.255.255.0 uh, is equal to 24. So we want to select 24. And now for a WAN, enter the new... For a WAN, blah, blah, blah. let me see. We don't want to. We don't want to enter. We don't want to configure the WAN. We're going to leave it as it is. And for the LAN, we just press enter for nothing, right? IPv6. We don't want to do IPv6. Uh, do you want to enable DHCP server on the LAN? Uh, yeah, let's do that. I want to do that. That's fine. Enter the star IP address range. So we want to start at one eight two that one six eight that. 10.11 and we want to end at 182.168.10. That let's say 25. We're not gonna have that many. Uh, do you want to revert the to HTTP as the web configuration protocol? No, we want to use HTTPS. We want to keep it at HTTPS. Uh, it's gonna be a self signed certificate, anyways, but that's fine. All right, so now as you can see, we have. Um, <clears throat> we have the lane configure uh, as 192.168.10.1 slash 24 and we also have the when which is the way that we're going to go out as that's 82 that's fine as he has um, the HP the H C P V6 enable we are going to disable that later on but as you can see, we are done with the configuration of the PF Sense firewall, the initial configuration. We still are going to do lots of things with that firewall. But for now, that's all we have. So now in the next video, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to have to configure um, an Ubuntu server. And on that Ubuntu server, what we're going to be doing is we're going to run a Docker container. And in that Docker container, uh, what we basically want to do is install a browser so we can browse uh, so we can browse to it and so we can get to this the web GUI of the firewall so guys this is it for this video i hope you guys enjoy it and i will see you on the next one bye bye